SSDs have gotten cheap. You can buy a one terabyte SATA SSD for like 60 bucks now from a good brand like Samsung. Not perfect, but they are a real SSD that's actually going to be really performant. They've gotten so much cheaper. Even in the last three years, I feel like prices have almost dropped by 50%. It is insane how cheap they are. You can buy a four terabyte SATA SSD now for $220. It's, it's insane. It has dropped a ton in the past few years. And so now this video is gonna go over, should you still be putting three and a half inch hard drives or should you really look at putting SATA SSDs in a Synology NAS or really any other NAS? Because now we're at a place where having an all SSD NAS is actually within reason for a lot of people's budgets, especially if you're not necessarily storing a ton of data. So I want to talk about the pros and cons of SSDs, and we're going to be talking about mostly SATA SSDs, but we will also cover NVMe SSDs because there is a difference between the two, especially when it comes to price performance, as well as the ability to hot swap and things like that. But we're going to go over all of that in a minute here. So I do a lot of consulting. Check the link down in the description below if you're looking at hire me. And I have started deploying all SSD NASes or half SSD NASes for businesses. SSDs now are not that expensive and they have some truly massive advantages over hard drives for specific use cases. Actually, a lot of use cases. So SSDs will run circles around hard drives for randomly accessed files. SATA SSDs and SATA hard drives actually do not have that massive of a throughput difference if you're sequentially reading and writing files. It's about two times, so it's not that much more. A SATA SSD will be capped to about 600 megabytes per second, and a SATA hard drive can do sometimes about 260 megabytes per second, so they are within somewhat spitting distance of each other, but where SSDs just absolutely wipe the floor with hard drives is their random reads and writes. When you're randomly reading and writing to a SSD, it is able to essentially access more or less any part of the SSD at the same time. It's not perfect, it's not at the exact same time, but if you are accessing this file and this file and this file on a hard drive, the hard drive platter actually has to get around to there because there's a spinning platter in here. And so it takes time for that hard drive head to take the time to actually get to where the data is. With an SSD, there's no moving components. It is just electrical signals, which can more or less operate at the same speed based off of anywhere it's reading from the drive. And so that is where there's a huge difference. A SATA SSD, even pretty basic ones, will have about 100 times the random read and write as a mechanical hard drive. That is huge. That is a massive difference. And so when you're doing things that are randomly accessing files on the NAS, that is where you see this massive, massive performance difference between the two of them. So this is not just when people are accessing files. This is also when the NAS itself is using them. So for example, if you're running a Synology Drive database on there, there's a lot of stuff in the database that actually has correlation to different files and what's there. And so having that on a all SSD NAS will have a huge performance impact versus having them on spinning hard drives because those hard drives have to be clicking around to random places to access this data. Another thing that really comes into play here is when you have a ton of users connecting onto the NAS, even if it's just a standard file server. So say you have a hundred desktops all connected to the NAS, all opening and closing Word documents. Each Word document is probably only a couple megabytes. But all of those random operations on mechanical hard drives will start to slow down. Whereas SSDs, it just is a different league completely. And so that is the biggest selling point for going all SSD for a NAS because you can randomly access files insanely fast. And so this is especially true if you're running virtual machines either directly on the NAS or on the drives of the NAS using iSCSI or NFS that is where you will see a massive performance difference using all SSD for that boot pool versus mechanical drives, just because virtual machines, computers in general, 
the operating system has tons of random accessing that it needs to do. It needs to grab files here, 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 and here. And especially when you're doing something like an update, you will notice the updates and boots take 10 times longer with a hard drive backend than with a SSD backend, at least. It is a massive difference between the two. Okay, so that's a really big use case for SSD NASes. They are just so much faster, especially when you've got a lot of things going on on the file server. You will notice they run circles around their hard drive components. Now let's talk about storage capacity. And this is where hard drives are going to be winning out for the next probably at least 10 years from what I've read from benchmarks. Eventually, the SSD may actually beat the hard drive in terms of storage density. But for now, we are just not in that place that you can reasonably on a consumer level. Fun fact, they actually do sell a three and a half inch SATA SSD. That's like 100 terabytes in size. Completely impractical, costs insane amounts of money and is actually kind of slow, but they do sell them. But that is on the horizon. But for now, hard drives are just simply higher capacity. Right now, I think the highest drive capacity you can buy is 22 terabytes. I think both Seagate and Western Digital both sell 22 terabyte hard drives. And the max SATA SSD you can buy is eight terabytes, which is actually pretty solid. That, that's more than it used to be by a good margin. Though with those SSDs, you do start getting into QLC instead of TLC. And what that actually means is there's actually more data stored on every single SSD cell on a QLC versus a TLC device. And that's actually not a good thing. Long story, the more data you store on every single cell means the longer it will take to access as well as having a shorter lifespan, though this is not nearly as crucial. The biggest issue with QLC is it can take a very long time to access files and rewrite sections of data. So that is one issue and we're gonna talk about that later, but you can get very large storage capacity now with SSDs, though hard drives for the price are going to be much cheaper. So hard drives per terabyte are about a fourth the cost as SSDs per terabyte, roughly. And they also are going to give you at least three to five times the overall storage capacity compared to an SSD. So those are the big reasons for the actual using of hard drives. Now let's say we've got a basic NAS and we only need two or three terabytes for an office file server. That's where having something like this really, really, really shines. You can buy very reliable four terabyte SSDs today, which are going to serve you great. You can start by buying two or three of them and have eight terabytes of usable space. RAID rebuilds on SSDs are so much faster than on hard drives because of that random access time. It is really fast to replace them. Another downside that a lot of people bring up about SSDs that's really not the case anymore is longevity. For a very long time, especially in the like late 2000s, SSDs did not have that long of a lifespan. You can only write to a SSD flash cell so many times. It has a fundamental limit on how many times you can write data to an SSD before it starts to fail and will actually go into a read only mode because it just cannot handle having any more data. So that is a fundamental issue that every single SSD you buy on the market today has. However, the amount of data they can now take has gone up by an order of magnitude. It is very uncommon to ever burn out an SSD in this day and age, unless you're having an issue like write amplification or something like that, where there's something corely configured wrong that is causing the issue. In general, even for businesses who are hitting these SSDs all the time, you're very unlikely to actually see a lifespan difference between a SATA SSD and a SATA hard drive because that terabytes written has gotten so high. If you're worried about this, you can easily look up the terabytes written for every single SSD you're looking at. And to be on the safe side, give yourself a 50% overhead. Then multiply that value by your RAID multiplier. So for example, if you're running a RAID 5 array with five SSDs, that's gonna be four SSDs worth of storage, which means whatever your terabytes written are for one of them, just multiply it by four, and that will be the overall terabytes written of your pool. And so that's a really easy way to do the calculation where you're gonna realize, oh, I can write a terabyte of data to this thing every single day for five years, and I'm not going to even come close to hitting the lifespan. It is remarkable how long SSD longevity has gotten. 
and I have not seen an SSD fail because the flash cells died. And I deploy a lot of these units for video production houses who are constantly modifying these files. And so it's really not too big of a deal. Another really big advantage of SSDs is the power draw and the noise. SSDs don't have any moving components, and so they're dead silent to operate. And in general, especially smaller NAS units don't really have any noise themselves. So you can have a completely silent NAS if you go all SSD. Whereas hard drives, especially bigger ones, when they're seeking, you go clunk, 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 and you can definitely hear them. So that's another reason why people use them, especially for lower power builds. You can pretty easily get something that only is taking maybe 20 watts because SSDs draw such little power when they're not in use. Another thing to know, almost every single Synology NAS, all the ones that I know of, actually have the ability to have two and a half inch SSDs plugged in. So your NAS would have come with hard drive screws. You just pull out the tray, and there's actually four holes right here that you can actually use to install a SSD in pretty much any stock NAS, as long as it's a SATA SSD. And so it's really not a big deal for that. All right, so now we're reaching towards the end of this video. I do want to talk about a couple of associated pieces focused around NVMe SSDs. So first, we should talk about NVMe SSD caching, which is kind of designed to be the best of both worlds between a all SSD volume and a hard drive volume is a mixed volume, where essentially you've got one or two SSDs. Specifically, you want to be NVMe SSDs almost certainly. And these are used as read or read and write caches. Basically, with a read cache, randomly accessed files that are being accessed often will be slowly over time loaded into also being on the SSD drive. This means that next time it's requested, the NAS will not have to ask the slow mechanical hard drives for it. Instead, it'll be able to go straight to the NVMe drive, which will be almost instant return, especially compared to a hard drive. This means that there's less commands going to the hard drives, which means it can spend more time doing sequential workflows, and so you can get the best of both worlds there. This is something that's very, very, very hard to effectively benchmark, but I can tell myself that it does have a positive benefit on these setups whenever I'm looking at it. I can't put numbers to it, I've tried, but I can definitely tell, especially when you're installing apps and things like that, you do get a real performance benefit. And now since DSM 7.2, select Synology models, also have the ability to use NVMe drives as actual drives for storage. But there's a big asterisk on this where it has to be a Synology drive. And this is not one where you can say, ah, ignore, I wanna use my own and it'll just show up as red. No, this is one that will not even let you build a volume using a non-Synology NVMe drive. And this is a interesting proposition and can be useful for specific deployments. If you're running large deployments of Synology drive, having that on a all SSD volume can actually give a massive performance benefit. So having those kinds of things can be real cases and you can just get two 400 gig ones because it does not require generally that much space. It can also be great if you're running Docker containers and things like that, though for the price, it's very hard to justify because the Synology NVMe SSDs are so expensive. And so I don't think in this day and age, it's super viable to have NVMe SSDs for regular volumes because Synology has just kept the prices so high and will not let you build a volume with a non-Synology SSD. However, in general on a NAS, there's not a massive difference between a SATA SSD and an NVMe SSD for an actual overall storage pool, just because the networking protocol already introduces so much overhead that there's not a massive performance benefit, even though this one is so much faster than this because the NVMe protocol is just an, a PCIe protocol. It is designed for super fast transfer speeds between two units. One other downside of using NVMe drives, especially in enterprise, is hot swappability, meaning if you have to replace this drive, you would have to shut the unit down before pulling it out. Whereas any of the slots on the front of a Synology, at least all the plus models, are hot swappable. Meaning while the unit's running, you never have to shut it down to replace a failing drive. All right, well that's gonna be it for this overview. I hope this was helpful in kind of informing the pros and cons of running an all SSD NAS versus an all hard drive NAS. 
And as time's going on, it's becoming more and more viable to go all SSD. And I'm excited for that place where most people are just all SSD. If you have any other questions or you want to hire me for a project, there's a link for that in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.